I believe God will use me to add to your joy. Yeah. I say already there is joy in the house. Yeah. There is joy you agree with me. There is joy in the house. Yeah. Yes. Let's quickly take a look at the book of John 15, verse 7. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, whatever you want, it will be done for you. This show Christ and his way are one. It's simple. Take a look again. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever. He said, whatever you wish, you want, you desire. It will be done for you. Yes, man. Christ and his way are one. Jesus' way. Where Jesus, Christ and his way are one. Hallelujah. If the word dwells in you, it produces prayer fruit. That is F-R-U-I-T. How can this word dwell in us? It is not only committing the word to memory because of where we are coming from, how you are brought up, you are educated. And in educational academy, you need to memorize. But commit to the house of God, the Bible. It is not only committing the word to memory, to memorize the word. Indeed, it's valuable, it's good to memorize, but it is allowing the word to become an integral part of you. You know, we have city room, we have bedroom. So when you choose to memorize the word, it will only be acting in the city room, not in the bedroom. But you need it in bedroom because it lives in you. It must dominate you. It, it must rule you. It must satisfy your spirit nature. You know the reason why the world must be integral part of you? Because Jesus can only dwell in your heart through faith. And the Bible faith comes from God's word. I mean Bible faith, not faith. There are many faiths, all kinds of faith. But Bible faith comes from God's word. Like it is defined in the book of Romans 10, 17. Let me put it the way it is written there. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. When the word dwells in you, dominates you, rule you, live in you, it produces prayer fruits. That's Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Amen. Give me biscuits. Give me biscuits. Give me biscuits. You just receive it. You receive them. Receive them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Here I am. Forgive me. Forgive me. You receive those things. You receive that. These are the prayer fruit. Prayer fruit. You receive those things. If the word dominates you. The word dominating you becomes lordship of Christ in you. Lordship, Christ Himself. Letting the way have right of way in your life is letting Christ Himself have right of way. Say to your neighbor, 
letting the world have right of way in your life is letting Christ have right of way. That is, letting the world have right of way in your life is letting Christ himself have right of way. If the way is not have right way in your life, forget. So this Christ, this is Christ. You go straight. It, it's like a magnet. Nay, magnet. Nay, magnet. And if the magnet is there and the nay is here, there's no way they can jam, attract, connected. The word dominating you is the lordship of Christ Himself. The Lord will not meet you because you imitate someone else, what someone else did. The Lord will only meet you when you obey what he told you to do by his spirit based on his will. That is, act on obedience to God. Like someone gave just share testimony now. Say, praise the Lord. And money, water, I spread it three times here this way. I spread it four times this way. Twelve midnight, I spread it. You quickly write all those statements. By the time you get your money, water, you get home, you spread it. How many times this lady say he spread it? Oh, four times. Shh. This time, four times, 12 midnight, okay. You will now set your clock to 12 midnight. By the time you hear, I want to spray my money water. It will not work. Because this is imitation. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. In all my heart, in all my heart, in all my heart, in all my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Generally, everything that becomes of us today is purely imitation. You went to school because someone studied marketing and later became general manager. You say to your parent, I want to study marketing. I want to study marketing. Why? Because that man is a millionaire, he studied marketing. That is just the reason why you want to study marketing. You have abandoned God's vision in your life. Ah, oh, you see a soldier or a military man with uniform, general, beautiful. You know, oh, I want to be a soldier. Just because of that very attractive uniform, you abandon God's calling in your life. That is imitation of man. Some people that are looking around, they might have seen some beautiful attire. By the time they live here, they will now begin to look for that attire in the market. They want to buy the same uniform. And I know many of you must have gone to the car park to see some beautiful cars. You see, ah, this is Porsche car. Help me camera it. When I leave church today, I have to look for this type of car. I need it. I need it. Our life is full of imitation. You look at it different style of air, the way people play their hair. Life is full of imitation. This is why we are very limited in our thinking, in our doing, in our way. We are very, very limited. We can't go beyond. When you are a type that copy, 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 you base your life in copying. And there is so much weakness in copying. You can imagine how many business cards you have in your pocket. 
you are the architect, you are the lawyer, you are the accountant, you are this, because you don't know what to do again, you copy. Each time you see someone who is prosper in his career, you abandon your career, you jump into that career. And prosperity is not evident that you are called. You can be rich in doing what you are doing, and yet you are not called for that job from heaven. No, 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 no. You can be very rich in what you are doing, and yet it's not your calling from heaven. The end will prove that it's your calling. Tell your neighbor, the end will prove that what I'm doing is my calling from God. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. The end will prove that what you are doing is your calling from God. If there's nothing like that, people like me, where would I be today? This is inherited from my apostles. The price they pay is what I'm enjoying today. So the price you are paying, children you are born also to live to enjoy them. This is why we say the world is coming to an end, because everyone is copy. No one is patient enough to wait for God, to hear from God. Little thing you copy, you copy. Even in the world today, they encourage copy. When your, your children want to sit for exam, they give opportunity, first choice, second choice. So alternative everywhere. Where are we going? So it will be too soon for you now to say, this is my calling. What I'm doing is what I'm called from heaven to do. No, 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 no. The beginner is not the owner, but the finisher. Tell you about the beginner. It's not the owner of the job, but the finisher. And when you start where you begin to run faster, 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 and someone who has been struggling to get to you, but before getting to the end where you can receive a word, you suddenly fall down. And the one that coming with effort pass you, it will be the one to receive the award. So issue of faith is an issue we should critically look into and see how it really affects your life. Are you lived by faith? Are you a faith man? If you continue to copy and you are not patient enough to listen to God for direction, you will go where we will still come back to where we start. This is where you see people up, down. There's so much epileptic system of life today, epileptic. A copy cannot stand the test of time. This is why when challenges come, you lament, you complain. Challenges will come, but a copy man cannot stand the challenges. Who is the master of copy? Man is the master of copy. But the master of original, God, is the master. No one can be built up with philosophies or theory about the world. You cannot be built up to work with Jesus. It's not possible. Or on the history, it's history in the Bible you rely on. You want to hear stories, story about Elijah and no. The way must live in you, and you must live in the way to work with Jesus. As the deep that form the water so my soul longer after thee. Oh, Lord, of my heart, 
my heart desire when I long to worship can only be a part of Christ when the world dominates us. You become part of Christ. Then you can bring Christ on the scene. Jesus, you see him on the scene. Instantly. You can only make a very thorough decision, true decision, when you begin to see each day as if your last day on earth. But just look at yourself, today is my last day on earth. You know you are going to meet him, so just take a decision, let it be your heart anytime. You say, oh, I want to accept this, I want to follow him, today is my last day on earth, I want to follow him. Just take that decision with the word, today is my last day on earth. If today is your last day on earth, what else again? You are finished with the word over there. And is the head of immaterial world is the head. Invisible world is the head. And you leave visible world to invisible world. You meet him there. Just take that decision with it. Today is my last day on earth. You stop all what you do, you accept it. Take that decision with this word of encouragement. And uh, your heart needs to be free. You need a free heart, free spirit to accept Jesus. And you are not free. Free spirit can only attract Jesus. Free spirit. And your spirit is not free. So many things going on in your heart. Free spirit attracts the spirit of God. Free spirit. Now to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, right now begin to meditate on what you hear now. Begin to meditate on what you hear now. The message you are receiving, begin to meditate. Not think. I'm not saying begin to think about the message you know. Don't think about the message. You can only think about your situation. But meditate 
on the word you hear now. Turn it over and over and over and over again in your heart. Because if you are not turning it over and over and over, it will remain in your lips. There's difference between where in your lips and where in your heart. It is the way in your heart will release after finish, it will release the authority. There's power in your mouth. The belief in your heart is released by faith out of your mouth. Let someone say, there is power in my mouth. The belief in my heart is released by faith out of my mouth. Again. There is power in my mouth. He said, well, say, in Jesus' name, amen, power come. But before that power can be in your mouth, the belief in your heart must be released by faith. If the belief released by faith, it comes to my, your mouth again. There's power in my mouth. The belief in my heart is released by faith out of my mouth. So this means faith is believing with my heart and confessing with my mouth. That is faith. So there's power in my mouth. The belief in my heart is released by faith out of my mouth. So any moment from now, we begin to see what we are talking about. The power. Be here. You see? Me, you see? Chicken. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. How does this come? Power in the mouth come when the faith release the belief in our heart. I believe. No. Faith must release that belief before you believe. But today, we Christians, we believe with that faith product. Faith must bring that belief before we can say, I believe Jesus is Lord. Mm. If it is not released by faith and you say you believe Jesus is Lord, you are speaking to yourself. To speak of Jesus, faith must release that belief before it becomes a product of machinery. I believe Jesus is Lord. By what authority? Yes, the authority is the belief in my heart is released by faith out of my mouth. So because the belief is resting in the heart, there's no other place for him. That's the only place he lives. He lives in our heart. And it is released by faith. Out of our mouths. Let's start something. Are you ready to start with me? And we'll continue to build on it. Meditation is of heart. Thinking is of mental ascent. Faith is not a mental ascent. Faith is not an intellectual agreement. So to have this faith now, all what you have seen, you have heard since morning, and you are hearing now, begin to meditate on it. Meditation is of heart. It's not of mental ascent. Of heart. The faith bracelet I gave you is not of mouth, it's not of mental, it's of heart. And when your heart is engaged in something, your body, your faith, your appearance, your faculty will remain quiet. No one will know you are saying something, you are doing something. But today, it's not of your heart, it's of your mouth. Meditation is visit with God. If you want to visit Jesus, just meditate in his way. You will soon see him. You will visit him. Come on, brother, come here. 
Stand here. Come. I want to demonstrate something. Stand here. Come. Stand here. You see, this lady is very close to this man. Take, for example, this, this man is Jesus. Is close to him. And my brother is a bit far, further than this woman. If you want to go to Jesus, you get there before this man. So if we start meditation now, it depends on the distance you are to Jesus. This time you are to Jesus. Meditation is a visit with who? With God. You want to go and visit him? If the sister started meditate on God's word, and this man started also meditate on God's word, this man, woman will get to Jesus before this man. So therefore, this is just, it's a visit with him. You want to go and visit him, okay, they start visit, you want to visit, it's not running. You cannot run to Jesus, you cannot cry to Jesus, you cry cannot take you to Jesus, a dancing cannot take you to Jesus, running cannot take you to Jesus, walking cannot take you to Jesus, eloquent speech cannot take you there. If you memorize the Bible, it cannot take you to Jesus. The only thing taking you there is when you begin to meditate on God's word, and turn it over and over and over again in your heart. Meditation is of man's heart. Man's heart means man's spirit. And like I have said, Bible faith is of man's heart. I mean man's spirit. And someone can also be here. So if this woman now called Jesus, he would likely hear before this man. You no, know, I told you that faith is heavenly currency that purchases heavenly resources. What are we purchasing? Salvation, healing, blessing, prosperity. They are heavenly resources. The amount of faith you have is amount of heavenly resources. This is having, seems to have more than this man. This woman is having heavenly currency than this man. If you just say Jesus, he will likely cash. And this man will say Jesus 20 times before he catch what this woman will catch once. You may be seated. Thank you. Faith is an object that grows and develops in our heart or man's spirit. Object that grows, develops within our, our heart or within our spirit. Heart means spirit, as you know. Spirit of man means heart. So what I'm doing here now, by the time I reach there, I say, Jesus, and the man begin to walk. That does not mean you don't have faith. Maybe you likely to a father, a bit father. Maybe I'm a bit closer than you. That is why I say, Jesus, and he turns around. And you think you cannot do the same. You can do. But you're a bit father. You just need to begin to meditate on God's way and turn it over and over and over again, you may overtake me. No one is born without that seed, S-E-W-E-D, seed, is there, but maybe it's dormant. It's just like a man, you say, I'm poor. Because you don't have money in the pocket, you say you are poor, no. A man that is poor is not a man that does not have money in the pocket. It's a man without vision. It is when our vision is closed, when it comes to an issue of blessing, you don't have vision for that, you are poor. So in the same way, people say, I don't have faith. Who told you you don't have faith? 
It's dormant. You have them. Faith activates prayer. Write it down. You know, you talk of activation. Faith activates prayer. 90% of my teaching is about faith, 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 faith. Because that is the only thing that pleases God. You don't need to go to heaven to see Jesus. Religious people believe they must go to heaven to see God. But in our case, Jesus came to restore the fellowship and relationship between God and man. We are coming from religious angle, all of us, and we refuse to leave this idea of religionism, idea of this is how it should be. These are the idea we still carry on to Christianity. There's a difference between religion and Christianity. That is why we receive so much, so much attack today. Anything close to Jesus receive attack. If you are not close to Jesus, you don't have problem. But you are very close, you try to be close to him, you are in trouble. In the hands of Satan. That is why there is so much attack today on Christianity. Attack today on Christianity is like a Christianity, a lot of attack, attack, attack everywhere. And to that, Christianity, they are not united. So who is the Christian? Christian is unity. Christian is not disunity. Christianity is unity. Tell your neighbor. Christianity is unity. That is how do we, how we know Christian. You can see them. They unite by love. They greet by love. Their love sees beyond hatred. Their love sees beyond attack. When you attack me, the love in, or in me you see beyond that. So that is it. Their love sees beyond, beyond, beyond. But religious love do not see beyond attack. When you attack them, they attack you back. It is what you do to them, they do to you. But in our case, when you do evil to us, we do good to you. That is the Christianity Jesus left behind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor can be your enemy. Those who do not share the same faith with you, love them all. This is what Jesus said. This is the teaching of Jesus. What are we doing now? Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor can be your enemy, can be those who do not share the same faith with you. Love them first. Don't say because he's not a Christian and say, no, I don't want to see you. You don't want to have anything to do with him. No. Love sees beyond. It is when I love you, you can know who I am and whom I'm serving, the God I'm serving. I can only win your soul when you are close to me, when I'm close to you, not at a distance. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire, Lord Jesus. No one else will do Cause nothing else will take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find a way
understanding, you will see that you must stop thinking about where you have been and begin to think about where you are going now. That is the answer and the way out. When you look at where you are coming from, there's nothing and nothing glorify God. Meditate about where you are going and stop where you are coming from. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. What does it take you to accept this so genuinely? The reason why it's difficult is because we believe in majority. You have good friends, bad friends, those who can influence you, those who cannot say no. Whatever the decision they take is what you follow. And you are going to be responsible for what you give your life to. You give account on the last day. See Jesus as a finance. Finance. Jesus finance. And let us give all our heart. Right now, open your lips and say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save, my Save my soul. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Save my soul. Save my soul. Make me a channel a channel, a channel of shining light where there's darkness. Where is darkness. Make, me Make me a channel, channel of obedience, channel of obedience. Where, there's where there's disobedience. Make me a channel, Make me a channel. channel of pardon, channel of pardon. Where, there's where there's injury. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Being a channel of shining light, out there darkness. We're in the world, we are not part of them. Because in the world, full of darkness. But when you are a channel, channel of shining light, and you are working in the world, a channel of shining light working a means of darkness. There's so much injury, injustice, and now you are a channel of pardon. So it is time now to give yourself to prayer. Where you are accused wrongly, temptation, persecution, give yourself to prayer. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Begin to meditate. That will keep you busy. There's nothing you have not done. There's nothing you have not seen. The only thing you have not done well is your relationship with God. It is time now. Begin to meditate. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Save my soul. Lord Jesus, make me a channel of direction where there is no direction. A channel of way where there is no way. A channel of pardon where there is injustice. Begin to refill yourself now. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Don't say come into me. Come heart. It's heart he live. He live in our heart. Come into my heart. Watch me with your precious blood. That precious blood is blood of Jesus. And save my soul. If you are type that lying, you can lie anywhere. Make me a, a channel. A channel of truth. Where there is lying. Before you know it, where does you want to lie, you, you resist it. Because you have called for help. You are now become a channel of truth. You cannot lie again. 
So you begin to feel yourself. Feel yourself. Feel. Make me a channel of truth where there's lying. A channel of blessing where there's poverty. So before you know it, you become a complete two nations. Because right now it's like a only one nature that's working. Are you with me? I say you have two nations, but only one that is working. The other one is shut down. Which one is working? Human nature. Your divine nature is shut down. It's shut down. That is why it's difficult for you to meditate. You can't meditate. It's difficult. You struggle to say it in your heart because you cannot. You, you struggle to say it because you are not used to it. Every human being has two natures, but today, people nature, divine nature is shut down. It's only human nature that is working. And human nature cannot pray. The Bible says we don't know how to say a word in prayer. We don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. That is divine nature. And we cannot meditate with human nature. You can only meditate with divine nature. Because divine nature is of man's heart. Divine nature is of man's spirit. Why human nature is this mental ascent? Memorizing things, that is human nature. That's why you have time to say, Jesus, kill my enemy. Jesus, revive them. Jesus, kill them. Jesus, did them. I sent back to send that. Because the human nature, there's nothing you cannot say. It's killing, killing, killing. Destroy, destroy, destroy. I mean, destroy, 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 destroy. The human nature wants to retaliate. They, they, they derive joy in retaliation. But your divine nature live all for God. <laughs> divine nature today seems to be dormant, unused. We need to revive it. We need to clean it. We need to clean it very well to revive it for action. So thank you, thank you. God bless you. I want to pray for you, your spirit and your heart. Father, rescue my people. Amen. Rescue my people. Amen. Rescue my people. Amen. You know you need rescue. You need rescue. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in, in my heart. heart. That is divine nature. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. So thank you. You may be seated. Thank you.